sharpened pencils clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek. Hello, I'm Derek W. Truesdale. Welcome back to Increase Your Nerdiness. Got a fun lesson on the way for you today. But first, a couple show notes. I didn't have a podcast last week. You know, not that anyone cares, but things have been really busy around here. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to go to a bi-weekly thing, or hopefully I can keep up at the rate I've been going. I don't want to slow it down too much. So, uh, hey, as always, just follow the Twitter feed for the latest scheduling updates. So I don't want anyone saying, ah, he, he doesn't he doesn't say what he's going to be on. Just follow on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash uh, Truesdale Show, actually. You, I know it's confusing. That's kind of the live stream I do, but that's all at the website, DerekForPresident.com. All right, today we're talking about indexing, also known as the way to get MPEG files loaded in AVI Synth. Now, I got some cool lessons coming up in the future about pull-down removal, but I realized first I'm going to have to show you guys how to load in your files. All right, here's the deal. Uh, first off, MPEGs come in a whole bunch of flavors, like, uh, well, MPG would be the obvious one, uh, but they're commonly used in DVDs. They have sort of um, an MPEG an MPEG wrapped in what's called a VOB file. So if you were to put a, a, a DVD into your disk drive and go to the folder called video underscore TS for transport stream, that's a kind of uh, a stream here, open it up and you'll see your VOB files and that's the video uh, or possibly the menus. It, it's all the moving stuff on the disk and it's actually a hidden disguised MPEG file. MPEGs are also used, one common thing is HD transmission. If you have a so-called HD antenna, which in most markets is just a, a UHF antenna up on your roof, you can receive the digital broadcast in high definition uh, over the airwaves. And these come in something called a transport stream. Now, for broadcast, there are a couple things that uh, they're trying to do. First off, they they want you to be able to change it to their channel and pick it up at any point. So a transport stream could have like breaks in it. If there's signal errors or you just tuned into the channel, that's an issue that, that can come up. Um, and the other thing that is in it is error correction. I believe it's about a third of the signal is dedicated to error correction because Remember, it's going out into the airwaves, which is subject to all sorts of interference and, and garbage that can get into the signal. But with that extra air correction, they can make sure that every last bit gets to you accurately to your home. So if you've got an HD antenna or a UHF antenna way up there on your roof, also known as that's a real antenna when you put it on your roof. So uh, I know a lot of people are like, I have an antenna in my attic. Can I get the HD channels? Just just put one on your roof. It's not that hard. I've installed a lot of antennas. It's uh, not that big a deal, unless you live in an apartment or something weird like that. So get it up on your roof. Uh, I'll probably be talking about that in future episodes in Increase Your Nerd of Increase Your Nerdiness because I'm cheap. Any way I can save money and not have to pay for TV is better. Okay, so different flavors of MPEX. Oh, the one more, the the other one is your camera. I'm actually recording to an MPEG right now because HDV on cameras that records to digital tape. Well, it's tape, but it's digital stuff stored on the tape. The tape itself is analog, right? I believe that's the case. Uh, but I have an HV30. It's a Canon camera. And it records to, like I said, these MPEGs. So you'll get these files. I believe they're called M2Ts or some weird name like that. And you might have those, and you're trying to crack them open. Open them with AVI Synth. That's what we're discussing today. Okay, so anyway, the whole sort of archaic video for Windows framework uh, is expecting normal AVI files with some sort of a codec. And MPEGs, remember, have 
these, they're called keyframes, right? About every half a second. I mean, typically it's a half second. And so they're like there's one frame where you get the whole picture almost like you would an entire JPEG image. You can decode it. And then the next few frames are based on that. So they say, all right, uh, you pixel or macro block, whatever you are, uh, remember that color you just were? I need you to stay that color except add this to it or make the following changes. So it's all dependent on that keyframe uh, as, as you get into the other frames that are based on that. Now we have uh, P frames, which are the predicated frames. And then in between those, you can even have B frames, which, which are bi-directional interpolated frames or something of that sort. And they're actually based on frames that are based on other frames. It's uh, pretty freaky how all this stuff works out. Now, it's actually important to understand this stuff as we as we get into indexing. But the one program we're going to be using for this, thank you, Mr. Donald Graft, the author of DG Index. That's what we're going to be using. So let's open it up now. So here's the deal. When you download DG Index from the internet, you'll have what I'm looking at here. You'll get a folder. It's got your dgindex.exe and then dgdecode.dll. Now, the DLL is the thing that allows AVI Synth to open these things up. So just install it. As we've discussed before for installing filters in AVI Synth, you just take that DLL and drop it right into your AVI Synth plugins directory, and you'll be able to open it there. But first, you have to make an index file with this thing called DG Index. Um, so here it is. And what I'm going to do, I have sort of a pre-made thing. Where am I looking? I'm looking for an M2V. All right, Derek.MTV. So we're going to drag that in. And here we have it. Um, now let's first look at the audio options. Of course, you can disable it and have no sound. You can demux the tracks, which is going to save a separate audio file for when you're loading these. And then you can decode to wave, decode all tracks. That would be for if you have a DVD, for example, with multiple audio streams in there. Uh, now, video options. Uh, we're going to be talking about this next week. Uh, I had originally recorded some footage, and I'm going to split it into two parts to not make this too huge. Next week, we're going to be talking about pull-down removal, and this stuff here will be explained in more detail. Um, let's see. This stuff, actually, if you're loading through AVI synth, doesn't matter a lot. <laughs> I asked this question on one of the forums, and, and then you have all this stuff with uh, process priority, the playback speed of this stuff, and all kinds of fun things, and if you know how to log quantization matrices, you probably don't need this guide, so I, I, won't, I won't get into that uh, too much here. Anyhow, all you're going to be doing is saving project, and you would to, uh, save is, is something like this, which obviously you can see exists here on my computer, but I've already got one here. So, all we need to do, uh, and here's our file, where is it? Uh, Derek.d2v, there's that. All we need to do is create an AVI synth script, like so, and we're going to say mpeg2 source. Now, this is dependent on that dgdecode.dll, so make sure that's in your plugins directory. You have your parentheses, and you have your string in quotes, which is your file name, which is derek.d2v. And so that'll load right up. Now, uh, you probably want to load up your audio source. And... This is where it gets dicey. I'm going to show you a sample audio file I have here. And you can see that it, it says there's an audio delay here. And actually, if you drag one of these things, I'll give you an example. Let's pull up DG Index. And I'm going to drag one of these files that generates this problem into DG Decode. And you'll get the following message. Warning. Opening GOP is not closed. The first few frames may not be decoded correctly. Now this goes back to what I was talking about before with the keyframes. Now since there's a keyframe every half a second or so, 
the keyframe starts this GOP, this group of pictures, starting with the keyframe and then a whole bunch of ones that are based on that. Well, if, if you were to randomly cut into a stream somewhere, like if you're taking an excerpt from a file, or if you just tuned into part of the broadcast and you're recording that, you are probably not going to come right in on an iframe or your, your keyframe. That's the other name for it. And so it's going to say, okay, now make these changes and make these changes. And you're like, make these changes to what? I don't know how to decode this. Like it said, you're not going to be able to decode it properly. So what happens is you just jump to the next keyframe you can see. But meanwhile, you have an audio stream, right? So now you're off track because your first frame of video is actually a little bit later. You see the problem? And that's why DG Index creates these files right here where it has an audio delay, which is going to be a negative delay, uh, meaning the audio is, is actually sooner. <laughs> I don't, it, it's a weird way of, of stating it, but you'll get this from time to time. So I'm going back to our script. Let's talk about this. Um, the way to load up an AC3, which is probably the most common uh, form that of, of, um, of audio that you would find in an MPEG, at least on a DVD, we have this command here, Nick AC3 source. And that's actually from the Nick Audio plugin. And if you install that, it comes in different flavors. So sometimes it's like, um, oh man, I forget. Uh, if you're loading something from your Canon camera like mine, it'll actually have an MPA file, which can also be loaded through, uh, through Nick Audio. So it could be Nick AC3 source to load that, or it could be Nick MPA source. You kind of have to look up the documentation, but I'm going to show you the basic procedure. So don't panic. Um, Anyway, I'm going to uncomment this line, and here's the syntax here. All right, so we loaded up our clip, and this little bit here where it says last means take the last thing that was loaded up. That's a cool thing that can actually save you some time here in AVI Synth. So we're, we have a command audio dub with our giant set of parentheses going all the way out, okay? You, you sort of, it's, it's like that movie uh, uh, Inception, right? you got to remember what layer you're, you're thinking in. All right, so we're audio dubbing the last thing that was loaded, and then your audio, Nick AC3 source, parentheses, and then you've got your string inside. Okay, so let's go to our audio here, which is Derek PID 034T132, meaning when it says three and two channels, that's meaning it, it's like the 5.1 Dolby audio like that. So I'm going to push F2, or you can click on it, you know, to like you would be renaming a file, but we're not actually going to rename it. But I'm going to push Control C to copy that. All right, so there we go. That stuff is copied to the clipboard. Let's go back to our file, and right there in the quotes we're just gonna paste that giant thing because we don't want to have to type all that out manually okay now that would load up normally if this was just stereo but since it's 5.1 audio we're gonna put a comma and say two so what we're doing is we're we're setting the number of channels that we're down mixing to two all of this is in the nick audio documentation this is what I was sort of talking about last time, and that's setting the variables, understanding the documentation of AVI Synth. So now that we have that, hopefully it'll work. Uh, this is the first try, so here we go. We're going to take Derek.AVS and drag it here into Virtual Dub, and yay, it's all loaded up. So there you go. That's how you perform indexing and you can load up your file. Now, now that we've done that, <laughs> I'm going to show you an easier way because DG Index is very powerful and it's probably the best way to load up uh, DVD sources for reasons I'm going to get into next time when we talk about pull-down removal. However, uh, FF Video Source is an easier way. Now, this one is actually hard to find 
you need a special DLL shown here. But here's the syntax. FF video source, parentheses, inside you have your string here that loads the file. And depending on the frame rate, you can also add this stuff like frame per second num for numerator equals 30,000 and or 30,000. We'll, we'll talk more about advanced frame rates and then FPS den for denominator equals 1001. In other words, what we're saying is this is 29.97 frames per second. That's the proper way to do that. And then once you do that, you take it and uh, it, when you drag this into virtual dub to open it up, you'll actually see right over here that it created a Derek.m2v.ff index file. Uh, and it might take a couple seconds to generate that, but the next time you load it up, it'll be faster because it already has that index file. So that's how to index your MPEGs and load them into AVI Synth. Stay tuned next time as we talk about pull down removal on Increase Your Nerdiness. Sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek.